Hello and welcome to this video on sugar. Not all sugar is created equal. Beyond the fundamental structure of the different kinds available, not all can be metabolized by humans. An even smaller number cannot be fermented by yeast. These unfermentable sugars are used by brewers to sweeten their wash and in commercial production to sweeten food without adding calories. Some common examples of unfermentable sugars are xylitol, stevia, splenda, and more naturally occurring versions are lactose and maltodextrin. These are used to add sweetness, body or mouthfeel without adding alcohol. This happens because the yeast cannot ferment these sugars. These are unfermentable sugars used for things like kombucha and cider. It works because yeast used in brewing from a supplier lack the enzymes needed to break down complex carbohydrates. However, there is a big caveat to that. Wild yeast do occasionally have some of the necessary enzymes and can break down complex carbohydrates into usable sugars. The first of these, xylitol, and the second, stevia, are functionally the same product in fermenting. Stevia and xylitol do not ferment. They cannot be used as reagents in fermentation and may be added where a sweeter taste is needed. Generally, this is in the bottling stage. The only catch to this is that xylitol is slightly fermentable with trace amounts metabolized. Stevia is a natural alternative, unlike the artificially produced splendor. Stevia refers to the source of this sweetener, which is the stevia plant. The range of glycosides that are known as steviols range between 50 and 400 times as sweet as that of table sugar. The downside to using these is that in large quantities, it will produce a very obvious artificial taste. Xylitol has also been known to cause stomach issues, especially in large quantities, but the amount needed for that wouldn't be an issue unless you're going to create a very pronounced problem in your flavor. Xylitol also has a further complication in that it can cause severe diarrhea in some people. Finally, Xylitol is toxic to dogs. On the off chance your dog may be exposed to it, it is best not used. Splendor is another option. It is a synthetic product made from the combination of sucralose and maltodextrin. It is an artificial sweetener and is far sweeter than table sugar. Estimates place it at about 600 times the sweetness. When used, even in moderate doses, it can taste artificial and should therefore be used very sparingly. Another common unfermentable sugar is lactose. This is the sugar found in dairy products. It is made up of a glucose and galactose molecule. If you are either making yogurt or know someone who does on a regular basis, they may have access to it for that reason. This does not work when fermenting for kombucha, but will for other things. It is often used during the bottling process, as it will increase the sweetness by a small amount, but it will also add body. Overall, the advantage to using lactose is that it is completely unfermentable by yeast, and it does leave a very mild sweetness. To achieve an appreciable sweetness from lactose, you would need to add enough to your brew that it would adversely affect the mouthfeel and body. Your final and perhaps most common unfermentable sugar is maltodextrin. It is used in brewing on a regular basis, providing almost no fermentable effect. It does however add body and mouthfeel. You add this at about half a kilogram per every 20 litres. Despite being called unfermentable, there is about a 16% fermentation rate. It is derived from corn and primarily composed of starch 
Now the long complicated chains of saccharides. It is commonly made from a combination of malt extract and dextrin. This is a complex sugar consisting of a chain of dextrose molecules. Because yeast lacks an enzyme to break down this long chain, it cannot be readily metabolized. Despite that, some success is made due to things like hydrolysis. It adds mouthfeel, but does not add a significant amount of sweetness by comparison to the other options. These non-fermentable sugars are used to back sweeten a brew. This is the process by which you add sugar to sweeten, change the mouthfeel and rebalance your brew after the primary fermentation is completed. In the case of cider, this can be added to the individual bottles, or a larger container that you then divide into individual bottles once your fermentation is complete. You are best served by both mixing your priming sugar and back sweetening at the same time. Doing it this way allows you to allot an equal amount of all your sugar to every bottle and ensures that your back sweetening sugar of choice is mixed properly with your brew. Thank you for watching this video. Please consider liking, sharing and subscribing. Please post any comments, questions or suggestions below.